Hello, so we are from Friday to Viernes, Latino Hustle, and your host, Rodolfo Vargas. And today we're going to be talking about left brain and right brain. So guys, I read these two books that I believe are amazing. I've been, I've been investigating this topic for a little bit. And I found these two books that I actually put it in a in paper. I have never seen somebody put it in paper so easy to read or so well uh, explained. And one of them is the book A Whole New Mind from uh, Daniel Pink. We're going to talk a little bit about it. And the other one was a uh, Nobel Prize in Economics. Uh, Daniel, I call it Kahneman, probably I'm pronouncing it totally incorrectly <laughs> but it's I believe it's amazing this book think fast think slow and the different uh, different decision making that we make every day sometimes you make a decision fast sometimes you think fast you something you think slow sometimes you make a decision you don't know how you make that decision sometimes you're eating so much and you don't know why you're eating so much sometimes in business you make a decision and you you make it so low in a and a, you thought you put a thought process and it, it amazing book by the way amazing book and um and give you different scenarios where the hollow effect, the priming effect, uh, so many good things from this book that I recommend to a lot of people. Anchoring effect, so many good things. Um, but today, it's just a couple chapters that I want to cover. Um, I'm going to mention, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do one video just for, for this Think Fast, Think Slow. But today, I want to focus more on... Uh, with left brain and right brain and what's the future in business um, for people who are left brain and right brain and let's just start with that so let me show it to you let me let me let me process this together so guys in 1800s in the in 1800s what was the industry that people used to make the most money or the, what was the industry that dominated uh, the country, what was the industry? And if you think about it, the 1800s was more the agricultural age. If, you're a, if you were a farmer, if you had cattle, if you had the, all that kind of good stuff, then probably you were, you were one of the wealthiest people in that era, in your time. You know, what, do you, what, what are you planting? Well, I'm planting coffee. So probably you were a multimillionaire. What are you doing? So I have cattle. There is a, by the way, that, that, not, that doesn't mean that a lot of people with cattle, a lot of people in agriculture, nowadays they don't make a lot of money. They do make a lot of money still. But that was the dominant in that era, in the 1800s. And guess what happened next? The next era was the 1900s, early 1900s. And what was the, what was the industry that dominated the, the, in that era? You remember Ford? You remember the cars? You remember what was it? Was the industrial era. The, I remember in school we used to study all this about the industrial era. And if you think about it, what was the what were you, what you needed to be good at if you wanted to succeed in that industry in that in that in that time? Guess what you needed to be good at? You needed to be good at manual. You needed to be you have you needed to have a lot of discipline. You needed to be in shape. You needed to eat healthy. And that's what all the story starts with that. The nine to five, you people needed to go to work from nine to five and all that kind of stuff in the industrial era. Um, maybe you needed to go necessarily to school in order to make it. You don't need to be a farmer. What you needed to be good, you needed to be good with your hands. You needed to be good, the, you remember the assembly line. You needed to be good with all that kind of stuff. Okay, great. What's next? Um, the 20th century. The 20th century, I'm talking about what, 1990s, 1980s, maybe I'm going to put it early 2000s. What was, the, what was the era, what was the age that dominated? You guys are ready? They call it the information age, the information era. Uh, knowledge workers, the person with the most knowledge, the person with an MBA, the person with that high education, nothing wrong with going to school or nothing like that. I'm just telling you, that was the dominant. What is it that you do? I'm a manager. I have an MBA. I graduated from such and such. I did this. I'm good at math. I'm good in calculus. I'm a great at this. I have all this knowledge. I know all this information. 
and that made them the information era, the information age. Who were the people that dominated? If you think about it, what you needed to be good at? Maybe you needed to be good at retaining information. Maybe you needed to be good in uh, 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 knowing a lot about something, spe specializing one thing in knowing a lot. Uh, the person who maybe you were good in, um, in, in informatic, maybe all these people who are good in um, software developers. If you were in coding at that time, imagine this, you know how to code and you're in 1998. Man, you're a rock star. That was, oh my gosh, this person knows how to create a website. My gosh, you're a god, you're amazing. That was the information era. Make sense? Now, now we're shifting a little bit. And this is what, why you need to be, that's why you need to be ahead of the trend. And here's what we're gonna be coming between the difference of left brain and right brain. Uh, information era, information age was more of what? Logical thinking, logical. The, your, your left brain, your left brain is the logical brain. Your left brain is the brain that knows how to do math. The, the left brain is the conscious, the consciousness brain. And, and, and thinking fast and thinking slow is the, the thinking slow. The thinking, the, the moment that you sit down and process stuff, more your logical brain that was the dominant in before in the information age. Now let's go what's going on right now with 21st century. What's going on now? What's going on in 2018? What, what people see in the future? What is gonna happen in 2020, 2030? What era are we entering right now? And why is important to know it? And why is important to put emphasis in this? In the next era, the experts have called it conceptual age, the conceptual age. What is a conceptual age? Is, is somebody who can know something complicated, explain it in a concept. Is somebody who, who's creative, somebody who is empathized. I was talking about empathy. I was, I was reading a, a little bit about empathy. In the phone, uh, prior, why do people used to have the phones in the information era? In the information era, uh, let's go industrial era. What was the only reason why we needed to have the phone? To make a call. That's it. We just needed a, a phone to make a call. You remember the, the phones that we used to dial like this? Uh, you need to dial it. To dial 23650. Dial each numeral in this manner, pulling the dial around to the finger stop each time. That, that was the only reason why we had a phone, to call somebody and to talk to somebody. In the information era, the phone was used to store information. You remember when they came out with the smartphone? Oh my gosh, the smartphones are gonna be so amazing. Oh my gosh, you can do formulas, you can do math in the phone. That was information era. Oh my gosh, you can do something. Now, conceptual era is not about that. Conceptual era is people buy the phone not because to store information, not to, uh, to, do, to call somebody. People buy a phone because what it means to them. Because people buy a phone because a phone means something to them. Have you seen people like the phone, they don't even know how much memory the phone has, but because it's an iPhone or because it's an Android, they go and they pay it. Why would somebody pay a thousand bucks for an iPhone X? Why would somebody do it? Would you pay a thousand? But you're not buying it because you have great or oh, great reception. You don't do it because of that. You do it because it's an iPhone X. And what it means to have an Apple, what it means to have an iPhone, what it means to have an Apple computer. So what happened is the concept is changing, not necessarily information. I'm not saying information is bad though. I'm just telling you that the business is shifting to more conceptual age. Let me give you another example. Uh, GM, General Motors. I was doing a video on Facebook about this the other day. Um, General Motors says, you know, in the information age, General Motors, why General Motors is so important? Because th there is a saying in, in business or in economics that whatever General Motors is doing, that's what the United States is doing. If General Motors is doing good, uh, the country is doing good. If General Motors is going down, the country is going down. That's kind of a saying for economics and people in business. That's the way that they think. But anyway, General Motors. In the information age, they, was, they were hiring mostly 
MBAs, people who graduate with MBAs, they were the God, they were the people who were good, they were the people who were like, like the, the brains, that was the people who had the information, could handle uh, the production of the cars and increasing the price and all that kind of good stuff. MBAs. Now, in the conceptual age, um, you know what GM is now looking now? They're not looking now too much for MBAs, they're looking for MFAs. And people say, what is an MFA, Rodolfo? Well, an MFA is a um, master in fine arts. What? Master in fine arts. What does he mean? Because somebody with fine arts is somebody who thinks in a concept. It's somebody who's creative. It's somebody who sees design. So people say, if I'm going to hire this person who's going to be the manager of the, of the corporation, you know, it, actually building cars is like designing. You're designing, you're making art uh, in wheels. That's the way that they see it. So conceptual age is the future based on this. Conceptual age put more emphasis on your right brain. Conceptual age put more emphasis in empathizing with somebody, giving customer service. If you're in business, it's weird that if you want to know something about a product or if you want to know anything about anything, guess what you need to do? Just go to Google and you find it. If you're a realtor, let's just say you're a realtor. Um, if I want to know the price of a home or if I want to know where the house is located, I'm not necessarily I'm looking for a realtor who's going to help me to do it, uh, to look for the price of something or how the house is. I can do it myself. Right now in the conceptual age, people are looking for realtors, the realtor that can empathize with the client, the realtor that care about the client. If you're selling a product, whatever product you are, people not necessarily are looking for the product, just the product. Product, competitive product in product is not going to move you to the next level. But the company or the person that knows how to relate to the consumer, to understand the consumer, that empathize with the consumer, that was the power right now in the market. The people who see the trend prior it happens, those are going to be the people that are going to be winning. Imagine this. Imagine that you knew what is going to happen in the future and you take advantage of it. You know, I'm in insurance and financial services. And if somebody wants to know anything about insurance or financial services, anybody can go and look at it. But what about the service? What about the, the taking care of the client? What about you sit down with the client? You really care about the client. You send them a letter. You spend time with them. That makes a big difference. That makes a big difference. Whether you're a car salesperson. Now, I wanted to buy a car. I can just go online and look at the price of the car. You know, it's not like a big deal. Like, I mean, I can go and go to any dealer I want. But I go and buy a car from always from this guy who treat me so well that he treat me, I mean, totally different. Every time I go to a dealership, the guy is, man, Rodolfo, what do you need, man? Do you want a cup of coffee? Where do you want to sit down, man? Let's go have lunch today. Let me treat you. Let me take care of you. I say, you know what? I can go and get the other car in the, maybe at the same price, maybe a little bit less. But you know what? I'm looking for customer service. I'm looking for conceptual era. I'm looking for conceptual age. I'm looking for somebody who's creative. Uh, for the realtors, there is this uh, very interesting. They put a sign the other day, house for sale. And if you buy it, I don't know how they sign, uh, we give you $250 um, free tacos from the, buy from the buying this house. And I'm watching this. That's freaking creative, man. Just because of that, I want to go and check the house. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm going to buy the house because of the tacos. But I mean, that was freaking creative. I love that. So creativity is going to win against information. That's the future. And again, let me give you a disclaimer. You keep developing your left brain. You keep reading. You keep uh, using the math, using the numbers. You keep, I play chess. I love to play chess. I love that kind of stuff. I like my left brain. But you know what? Right brain, creative, taking care of people empathizing with people, uh, getting along with people, uh, understanding how they're feeling, understanding uh, what's going on with them. That is missing right now in our industry. That is missing right now in the country. That is missing right now in the world. Everything is so information. Everything is about what is on Facebook, what is in this, what is in that. And people forget about this. People are forgetting about this. So there is a heart. There is, people are forgetting about the heart. So if, there is a big market for the companies, for um, entrepreneurs, for people in any, in, for education, if you're a teacher, there is a big opportunity right now for the people who know how to connect with the right brain. 
So with that being said, that was the message of today. I hope that you got value. Don't forget to subscribe to Latino Hustle. And don't forget to watch all the time from Friday to Viernes. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.